Hey everybody, welcome back to Cliff Pickleball here at Clear One in Orlando. I'm Rich Lively. Special thanks to Cliff, number one place to get your instruction on the internet. Thanks to Clear One for letting us do this here. Hey listen, don't we all know the very first thing you're gonna do in pickleball is get the serve in. And how many times do you miss one or do something? So we're gonna work with you today on how to get that serve in, but get a little pepper on it, get a little Tabasco, a little sauce, a little spice on it to hopefully win some points. Sometimes it really helps to be able to set up a point. You may not get an ace, but you can hit a good deep serve with a lot of spin and variation to help set you and your partner up to win the next point, that third shot that helps you win the point. So we're gonna go over some of the basics of serving. Now there's some different things going on this year. We all know about it in 2021. The drop serve, the COVID serve, the super throw it up in the air, Zane Navratil top spin serve. I'm just gonna help you figure out how to move that thing around put a little pace on it, use some variety. Nothing's worse than having a partner or you yourself that just hits the same serve all the time, kind of lobs it in the middle, because your opponents get used to that and start taking advantage of it. So let's get into it right now. Let's look at the serve. How can we move it around and win some points, put a little spice on the ball and do some great things. Let's get into it now. So let's go over the basics of the serve. Obviously we know in pickleball, if you're not going to be doing the bounce serve, which again is provisional, please remember this, that may not be around in 2022. So don't get too stuck on that drop serve. It's still a provisional rule. I'm not gonna be talking about the drop serve today. I'm gonna be going with a traditional serve that you actually just let go from your hand. We all know that we have to strike it underhand. It has to be an extension of our form. You can't deviate the wrist or do any side arms. You have to go from down to up, have to strike it below the waist and finish with an upward motion. Now, one of the confusion that a lot of people has is they see somebody hit like this and come through and then turn over and they say it's an illegal serve. It is not. As long as through the hitting zone, you're coming with an upward motion, you can do whatever you want with your hand after that. You can wave a magic wand. And that's where we're gonna show you some of the things you can do with your follow through that help influence the ball flight. So again, it's going to be strike it from underhand, obviously, below the waist, navel area, finish up. But now I'm gonna show you some of the variations. I'm gonna do it in slow motion. One of the things you wanna add to your game is sometimes some top spin. We see a lot of people that just stop right here and it has no spin on it at all, no variation. It's very predictable. You can start adding some top spin if you come from table tennis or you come from tennis. This is an easier stroke. If you're just picking up pickleball, try and add this to your repertoire. Go out and try it. As you come through the ball and you hit it at this motion, as you come through, start rotating over, okay? You can actually call it, like my other video, the hitchhike, it's sort of like the reverse hitchhike. So if you're right-handed, you're gonna come through with your palm open, then you're gonna roll that thumb over like this. It's called pronation. You're gonna pronate the forearm, the wrist, and you're gonna turn that ball over. What does this do to the ball? It enables you to swing harder, hit the ball higher over the net for margin of error, but it also makes the ball, because of the law of air, you know, and uh, aero flight dynamics, it makes the ball have top spin, which makes it drop. You've seen a lot of the good players do it. You've seen people some, maybe you've even hit it with a forehand volley, uh, or you've seen other really good players even come with a ground stroke. It's basically like your forehand ground stroke, where you're gonna step in, come through, pronate and rotate over and finish out like this. One of the mistakes a lot of people make though is this, watch this. They hit the ball, they start pronate and they finish way down here like this. Many times that also looks like an illegal serve and it's pretty close because they never finish up, they just do this. What you wanna do is make sure you go through the zone and finish up high, almost up to chest height and then roll it over. What you'll notice is you can hit it eight to 10 feet above the net, and if you rotate hard enough, it will still drop. The advantage of that is as it drops and hits the court and your opponent has to let it bounce, then it picks up speed and kicks high. And what that means is your opponents are having to hit a lot of returns up here, which is exactly what you want. You don't want them to just hit it right here in their power zone. You want them to be caught up here and they have to generate more power, which is difficult. Which, what does that mean? A lot of their returns will land right in the middle of the court where you and your partner can come in and you have more variety and choices of the shot you can hit for a winner. So one more time, it's just going to be hit down from below, come all the way through and extend that arm out. You see how my arm is extended. Don't hit here and bend the elbow too quick. That's the mistake a lot of people make. They hit it in the net, 
or it just barely makes it past the kitchen line and then it's too easy to return because it's down at your opponent's hip level. So again, come through, extend all the way out, almost like you're trying to touch them in the nose with the edge of your paddle and then roll it over. That's the top spin. The second one I want to tell you about is the cut. The nice thing about this is it bounces and skids lower out of the court. Same motion, look how similar it is. You're still gonna step in, strike it here, always extend through, but instead of turning this way, you're gonna lead with your pinky and you're gonna supinate and go out like this, okay? So instead of rolling over with top spin, it's going to have what we call a cut spin. If you're a right-handed player, not only will it have cut, it'll have just a little bit of left to right spin on it as well. What are the advantages of this? Several things. Number one, the ball bounces lower. So it makes your opponents return as they're digging down almost like a dink from behind the court. That's very difficult for them. They have to reach down lower, they have to pick the ball up, and many times they'll pop it up over the net once again, right in the middle of the court for you and your partner to have a choice of what to do. So as you come through and hit it here, one advantage is it bounces lower. Secondly, it goes away from your opponent outside. Again, if they're right-handed, it'll generally go to their backhand. So as it comes at them and bounces, it also kicks away. So it comes around them and they have to reach for it. Again, that's advantage of you. So again, let me show you. You come through the ball, through the hitting zone. And remember, your hitting zone, your power zone, is between your knee and your hip, which sets up perfectly for the pickleball serve, which is supposed to be struck down there anyway. Your power zone is right in here, and then as you hit it and extend out, then you open up like this, okay, or supinate, and you allow it to extend through. This one you can hit a little bit easier, and sometimes you can float it high, or you can swing really hard and come through it and hit it low and it kicks hard off the court. So again, come through, extend, turn to the outside, and watch it do an outside low spin that cuts away from the opponent. So one more time, real quick, let's go through it. The top spin serve. One, two, three. The cut slice serve. One, two, three. Just remember those things. Three easy steps to becoming a much better server and becoming a dominant player and giving your opponents all kinds of grief. Hey, listen, thanks again for joining us here at Cliff Pickleball. If you love this stuff, which you ought to, then you need to subscribe to Cliff Pickleball right down here on YouTube. Thanks again, we'll see you next time. Happy pickling.